Hello, everybody. Happy April 28th, 2020. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on today's show, we have a three-sport and three-position athlete in the game of football, Daniel DJ Donovan. Mr. Donovan, thanks so much for being able to come on today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem, man. I think probably the biggest thing I'm going to ask you, and maybe the hardest question I ask you, how are you dealing with the quarantine? It's it's definitely different. Um, doing it by um keeping together, um, working out downstairs. I got a little squat rack going on, so I'm able to continue working out, doing some speed training, and then just school wise, it's just online school. It's not too bad. It's it's all right, but always finding something to do. Now I've seen the video that you've done as far as you know. You talked about working out at home, the squat rack, and everything else. Yep. That's pretty impressive that you're able to keep up with your training at least more than a lot other athletes are doing because of this quarantine. Yes, it's definitely helpful, and it's definitely going to show in the regular season and possibly postseason. Now, let's go back a little bit. Let's reflect on this past football season. You played for Danbury uh, in the FCAC West, Class Double L, so you see a lot of high-talented teams. But yes. specifically for you, because you play middle linebacker, running back, and fullback, you're always in the game one way or another. So I think the question first I want to ask you is, coming into your freshman, sophomore, and so forth, the seasons that you have, your junior season as well, how do you keep yourself in shape knowing that you're going to play about, let's say there's 100 snaps in a game, just to throw it out there, you playing about 90% of them, if not more? Just got the condition. Um, you do speed interval training, um, more like, because the way football's played, it snaps and you got like a, depending on the, what the time it is in the game. You got a 10-second break between snaps. So I do speed interval training, run 50 yards, take three sec like a couple seconds off, then run another 50. Just got to keep conditioned. Also do jump rope and running a lot too. Now, is that something that was instilled with you at a young age? Or was that something that the coaching staff, as you continue to come through the game of football, kind of really implemented with you? Um, I was always pretty conditioned due to lacrosse, but then um, – Coach Thierry and the other coaches also put more training on, more conditioning to make sure the whole team's conditioned. And we do the same thing, so we can run our also we can also run our high tempo offense. Now, going into the regular season, both as a fullback, a running back, and a middle linebacker, you've kind of found yourself a niche where you've shown that you can play all three positions at a high level. To you, which position do you like the most? And which position do you – I don't want to say like the least because I'm sure you like all three because you can hit people. But which position do you see yourself maybe playing the least amount at the next level? I would say my favorite position would have to be linebacker just because I'm able to, like, see everything, be able to constantly help everyone out and be able to, like, manage the defense. Mm -hmm. And I would probably say, like, the position I don't probably see myself playing would probably be running back just because I'm just not – as agile as some of the other kids, like some of the smaller running backs. But definitely, I see myself playing more of a fullback who can also carry the ball and also go out for passes. You know, watching the film of you, you know, prior to this interview, the one thing I could tell you is you look like a linebacker. Big, broad shoulders. You, you seem like you play with, um, what's where I'm looking for? Basically like your head's on fire. Like right now you seem quiet to me, but when you're on the football field, it looks like, it's I have the tiger, I see the target, I hit target. Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> just that's 100%. Yep, I'm just going to agree. Yep. <laughs> I like that, though, man. Seriously. I could see why, you know, the head coach for Danbury gave me your name and one other name to be able to talk to, and I can see why he did because, you know, the stats, although Max Prep's off by a little bit with tackles, you know, I think you told me they were off by about 20 or so, give or take. But, um, you know, the stats are there. You know, proof is in the pudding. You've kind of done the work both prior to the seasons and then going into the seasons where, you you know, you were able to show that you can play. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is, was there any games last season that you felt like, you know, you were at your best as far as maybe the stats didn't show, but you kind of were able to really show yourself as far as doing the most to help the team win? I would say it would either be the Trump – no, it would probably be the Westall game because 
the Westville game, I was able to just block a lot for the team. I wasn't really had that many star plays or I didn't have any touchdowns, not a lot of carries that game, but I was able to help block for a lot of our running backs so they can get big yardage. Do you pride yourself on blocking? So as somebody who can block, I would think that would carry over to the next level because that's a talent that a lot of people don't focus on, and you have that. Yes, thank you. I take a lot of pride in it and because – when I'm running the ball, I want Lyman in the block for me. And so I want, I'll help my running backs too, so they can help me later too. Do you think because you play both lacrosse and wrestling, not so much lacrosse because blocking, you don't really do much, but wrestling, you're able to basically put your hands on somebody, try to pin them down. Do you think that has helped you with your blocking and your technique as well? 100% because wrestling, you got to have a ton of hand control, a ton of wrist control, being able to control the person's wrist and then be able to manipulate them to get angles and so you can score points. So that's definitely helping me with football so I can manipulate the person's hands and be able to control their body and direct them where I want them to go to give my running back some room to run. As somebody who's a multi-sport athlete, you kind of have an advantage over a lot of other you know players because you're playing multiple sports and you're giving your body time to rest and being able to work on other things, being able to help yourself because by doing, like you said, wrestling, you're helping yourself without even really trying in the game of football. And I think, you know, going forward, even though if you may end up picking one sport at the next level, what you have learned throughout your career playing the other sports can really help you as far as playing football in college. 100% wrestling. With wrestling, it's just 100%. It's all mental in wrestling. You at the wrestling, you're doing something for six minutes constantly. And you got to be able to it's all mental there. You got to be able to push through, persevere, and got to mentally beat the other person. And that's helping you with football because you got to impose your will on the other team so you can win. That's now in the game of football, oh, I apologize. It's okay. In the game of lacrosse, it's not so much, but you're like even playing defense. You have to mirror the person, make sure they don't get by you. And it's overall also helping my speed, agility, and conditioning. So lacrosse has helped you with speed. And wrestling has helped you with footwork and being able, like you said, with your hands and blocking as far as with the game of football. Is that right? Yes. And also conditioning and just mentally toughness, mental toughness as well. If you had to pick between lacrosse and wrestling, which one do you think helped you more with football and why? I would say wrestling because like taking shots and stuff is working on the tackling form and then like I said before, manipulating hands, getting angles, and also just the mental toughness that comes with wrestling is just something you can't get in from any other sport. You know, you talk about the mental toughness and, you know, like you said, with wrestling, you need to have that because it's basically you're pounding on somebody for X amount of minutes, depending on how long it goes and so forth. You know, tough season for you guys last year, five and five, you know, maybe wasn't the season that both you and the rest of the team wanted but it looks like there was some glimmer of hope as far as stretches of games where there maybe was a chance that if the team was a little bit more uh, wiser as far as age because of youth and such, maybe things could have been better. Can you preview a little bit what Danbury could be next year if a season is basically played? Um, 100%. We were always with, besides two games, we were within a touchdown. Darian, we were within a field goal. Um, love though we were within a touchdown it's just always close games and it comes down to a couple of decisions a couple of blockings a couple someone performing I mean executing what they had to do so especially this year because we only had I think four starters graduate four or five starters graduate we're bringing a lot of people up again and it's everyone's bonding more and everyone's getting more experience at the varsity level and we're going to come this year ready is there any is there any players in particular that maybe you want to mention that could maybe pop people don't know about, but will be, you know, not shocked after they hear, you know, they say your name from your mouth, but just in general, as far as players who might make a big leap from last year this, to this coming season? Well, you already have our star players, Xavier, Artez, Nick Smith, our Q, both our QBs, Patrick and Jackson, but some people that I think are going to pop out are alignment. They were pretty young last year. Now we have our kid Mason Fong is going to definitely pop out. He was a big part of our line last year, and he's going to make a big impact on our team this year. And also our left tackle, Jason Little, is going to make a name for himself this year. 
trying to think who else. Um, oh, and our safety and wide receiver, Brendan Boswell, last year had a sold, uh, collarbone injury week seven. But this year he's coming back bigger and stronger. He's going to make a big impact on the team. As somebody who's not familiar with the FCAC as far as the football teams, because I broadcast with the NVL, so I don't see a lot of the teams like Danbury, Darien, and so forth. So I'm not too familiar with the Danbury program other than watching film and such. So as somebody who has not seen the team it, you know, in person, tell me, are you guys more built on ground and pound? Are you more of a spread offense? What kind of offense do you run? I would have to say we run both. We have most of our skill guys are very, very fast kids. Most of the FCA cannot catch them, not touch them. Then we also have me, other linemen, and big dudes who will ground and pound and run through you. Do you think defensively that helps you? Because, you know, the FCAC, a very talented conference, you see a lot of top kids who, I mean, I see all over my Twitter hand, you know, my Twitter screen every single day, kids being committed to Division One programs, getting offers from Division One. Do you think that helps you personally? We'll get to the team in a second. But you personally being able to see the top competition because now if you show that you can tackle – a kid who is going to, I don't know, Brian or UMass or wherever, that tells you and gives you confidence like, hey, okay, I can play with these guys. I have a chance to play at the next level. 100%. If you're able to – if your competition's better and you perform against your competition, you are going to get looked at. And it's going to definitely help your recruiting at all because especially with recruiting, they want to see who you're competing against. And if you're not competing against good people, you're not going to get recruited as much. Now, looking at it from a team perspective, very young team last year. The record was not there, but did you get a sense after the season, like guys knew maybe we were a year ahead of schedule just because we just need to get the reps. We didn't graduate a lot of people. Maybe this is the coming season where things can pop and we'll surprise some people. Yes, we're definitely going to surprise a lot of people this year. We're, we're ready to go. Our brought a lot of people back, like I said before, and yeah, it's, we're going to surprise some people this year. I like that. You're just like, yeah, we're, we're going to surprise some people. Yeah. 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 Nobody believes it, but yeah, we're going to do it. Just watch. I'm going to do it. I'm going to have like 100 tackles. You know, you're going to be like the Sean Lee for the Danbury team. That's, that's fine. Whatever. Definitely going to be a team effort, though, 100%. Now, before I get into your favorite player from the Steelers, because you were telling me you were a Steelers fan, and I want to know who your favorite player is as far as – I'm sure it's a defensive player, but we'll talk about that in a second. I want to get to the offers that you've received so far. UPenn, UConn, Army, Lehigh, Lafayette, Those are the, Cornell. Sorry to interrupt. Those are the teams that have, like, high interest in me. Only oh, high interest. I have, oh, I apologize. High interest. Right now is Brown. Okay. So those are the ones that have re, you've received interest from. Do you feel like yes. that that's going to increase over time? Hundred percent. Going into camp, going into camps this summer, if we have any, and mm -hmm. going into my senior year, that'll definitely help my recruiting process as well. Is there any particular school that you're kind of looking for, either academically or you know, program wise? I'm sure you're looking for both. Um, I'm just looking for obviously academically something that is either is the Ivy or something that is like the Ivy, and then obviously athletically, I want a team that's always competing, always win it, like winning and has a good culture. Kind of like how Danbury is, because the one thing I've noticed is the culture there for what the head coach does, and he does a lot for you guys. I see it all yes. over Twitter, you know, making sure he gets the tape out. I mean, I've always said to people who ask me kind of, you know, I want to get myself out there, but I don't know how. And I say, use social media. It can be your best friend or your worst enemy. And the way that the head coach at Danbury, and I've told him this in person, or not in person, but, you know, via messaging. I've said the way that you help your players, your kids, you know, it's something that I'm sure they appreciate because a lot of coaches, you know, they're not very technical savvy when it comes to that. But it seems like with him, it's like it comes off easy and he's able to do it. Yeah, he's – before Thierry came, I didn't really know about, like, Twitter and, like, I was such a big recruiting platform and I was able to you can, you can just direct message coach, tag him on your film. Mm -hmm. and Jerry, Coach Jerry is just really good at that and able to sell my film, sell my transcript, and just sell who I am as a person. You know, and it shows both in your play, you know, academically, 
who you are on and off the field and just because, I mean, look, you're a captain. You're not named a captain unless you're doing something right, you know, and a lot of credit goes to you and you deserve all the, you know, interest that you're getting as well as the one offer that you've received. I'm sure by this time next year, well beyond you, you know, you'll probably already made a decision where you're going, but I'm sure the offers will increase over time just because of the player and the person that you are. Thank you. Hopefully it does. The last question I want to ask you, and I appreciate the time being able to get away from school and all your online learning. I really do appreciate it. Who is your favorite player on the Steelers? Could be past or present. I like TJ Watt. I like the energy he brings to the Steelers defense and how he's able to compete and lead the Steelers defense. Do you try to mimic him? I don't want to say mimic because maybe that's not the right word, but do you try to take some of the stuff that you see that he does and try to implement into that, you know, into your game almost? Uh, yeah, when we go to our defense where I'm down at like the defensive end position or linebackers at a blitz, I mm -hmm. definitely use some of his hand techniques and some of his pass rushing techniques to get to the quarterback. Let's say TJ Watt was coming to a game. Let's say he was going to come to a Danbury game to watch Daniel DJ Donovan play. Okay. And you saw him on, let's say was next to your coach. He, he wanted to come down and watch you on the field and you saw him. Are you getting nervous or are you staying as you are right now with me? even keeled, and then you see target, hit target? I would say a little nervous at first, but then realize oh, I got to do what I got to do and see target, hit target. <laughs> Is there anything that you would ask him after the game? I'm sure – I mean, you don't strike me as the type where you would ask a gazillion questions and get all like goo goo gaga over him. I feel like you would ask him very simple, you know, constricted, you know, questions. I would obviously ask him like to help criticize or construct, like um, to get me better and like ask some uh, constructive questions, try to get, see where I need to like perform at better or ask what techniques I can improve or work at. Anything else as far as maybe what he, you know, if he tells you certain things about maybe weightlifting or, you know, potentially going up against a certain tackle or guard, I feel like you kind of would soak that in like a, you know, like a sponge. Yeah, I would definitely I would write it down and then work on it constantly and making sure I can do it. Well, Donovan, thank you so much for the time. I really do appreciate it. You know, I know it probably took a lot for you to get away from the classroom for a little bit, but I do appreciate you taking some time to be able to talk and you're always welcome to come on anytime. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. That'll wrap things up here on the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day, everybody.